Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. God is een God van justice. En weet je wat dat betekent? He always makes wrong things right. A couple of quotes on bitterness, resentment, things like that. The weak can never forgive because forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. It takes a lot of strength to be able to forgive somebody, let it go, and trust God to do what only God can do. I said last night, after somebody hurts you, don't let them keep hurting you the rest of your life by continually hanging on to what they did to you and hating them. I love this. The author of this quote is unknown. Forgive not because your enemies deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Yeah. Isn't that good? Here's a little story. One day, two monks were walking through the countryside. They were on their way to another village to help bring in the crops. As they walked, they saw an old woman sitting at the edge of the river. She was upset because there was no bridge and she could not get across it on her own. The first monk kindly offered, we will carry you across if you'd like us to. Thank you, she said gratefully, accepting their help. So the two men joined hands, lifted her between them, and carried her across the river. When they got to the other side, they set her down, and she went on her way. After they had walked about another mile or so, the second monk began to complain. Look at my clothes, he said. They're filthy from carrying that woman across the river. And my back still hurts from lifting her. I can feel it getting stiffer by the minute. The first monk just smiled and kind of nodded his head. A few more miles up the road, the monk griped again. My back is hurting me so bad. It's all because we had to carry that silly woman across the river. I can't go any further because of the pain. The first monk looked down at his partner, now lying on the ground moaning, and said, have you wondered why I'm not complaining? He said, your back hurts you because you're still carrying the woman, but I set her down five miles ago. <laughs> Now, don't miss what that said. You're hurting. Come on. There's people in here today that you're hurting, and you've been hurting for a long, long time. Some of you, perhaps, most of your life because of something that happened to you in your childhood. And it's because you have refused to lay it down. Today is the day to lay it down. Amen? Amen? How many of you were here last night and you got something out of that? Okay. We're calling this burnt but not bitter. Everybody in life is going to get hurt. I don't care who you are, what your background is. You have already been hurt. You probably will get hurt again. But the good news is, is the great healer lives on the inside of us as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, I'd been hurt a lot in my childhood, abused by my dad and a couple of uncles and my grandfather and married the first guy that came along when I was 18. I got married and that was like the dumbest thing I could have ever done because he was in worse shape than I was. And you know, a lot of times wounded people marry other wounded people And then they just keep wounding each other. And I did it out of desperation. I thought nobody would ever want me, so I just grabbed the first guy that came along. How many of you know that that's a tendency when you're afraid of loneliness? You'll take something, even if you know down deep in your heart it's not going to be the right thing. Amen? Yeah. Preach. Amen. <laughs> And, uh, but then you find out once you got it, you got it. And so we were married five years, but it was more like a joke than anything else because he constantly would run around with other women, didn't work, and, and uh, just was a con man and a petty thief and wrote bad checks. And, you know, it, I mean, it was just a mess. And he'd leave me all the time. He abandoned me in Albuquerque. He abandoned me in Oakland, California, and I'd have to borrow money and come home on a bus. Why? Why is it that women that have been hurt will marry somebody like that and then just keep going back to them and keep going back to them? Come on, is anybody hearing me? And keep going back to them. You deserve better than that. 
and so did I, but you got to stand up for yourself. Amen? We usually get what we put up with in life. Well, I had one child at the end of that marriage. I had one miscarriage, and then I had one son. We were married five years, and this boy was born right toward the end of our marriage, and I named him David. That wasn't my husband's name. <laughs> I named him after my brother, actually, but then I met Dave when my son David was nine months old. And Dave and I had five dates. He asked me to marry him. I always say jokingly, but it's probably true. He had to ask me before he found out what he was getting. Otherwise, he would have never done it. <laughs> and um, I had, I mean, a boatload of problems. So when I stand here and tell you that the Word of God works, and it will change you, and it will heal you, I'm not telling you because I read it in a book. I've experienced God's healing power in my life, but I am going to tell you that it will take more than you just praying to be healed. We pray... And I think we're, we have a misconception about prayer. We think when we pray, then God fixes everything. But you know what I'm finding out more and more even in the last two or three years? When we pray, very often God shows us what we need to do. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't move supernaturally. Anything we cannot do, he will do for us. If we're going to do nothing and expect God to do everything then that's not going to happen. And if you've been badly hurt by someone, you can get completely well and be whole, but I am not going to tell you some fabricated, made-up story. It will not be easy. It will take time. It will take you doing some things that you'd rather not do, things that you don't feel are fair, like forgiving people, and maybe even being required by God to bless those people. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Because somebody treated you wrong, that doesn't give you a license now to treat them wrong. I don't know what, what makes us think that. God never tells us to give other people what they gave us. He always says, treat them the way you would like to be treated. And sometimes you're going to have to treat somebody else right a long time before they begin to treat you right. And there's a possibility they might not ever change. But here's the thing. The amount of years that we have here on this earth are so limited. I don't think that you realize in your 20s and 30s how fast you're going to be 60 and 70 and 80. <laughs> Amen? You know, my life is, I've lived almost all of it. And so I'll tell you what, I'm going to double up and I'm going to get, make the devil extra mad in these last years that I've got. Because... I mean, what God has done in my life is absolutely amazing, and I can tell you it is actually totally impossible if it was anything other than God. There is no way that what God has done in my life could have happened, and he can and is and wants to do the exact same thing in every one of your lives, but the first thing you've got to give up is all bitterness, all resentment, all hatred, all offense. You have to let go of that stuff because even as we read earlier before I started actually the sermon in Mark 11, it says that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, believing that we have received it, we will get it. However, when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, you have to leave it, drop it, let it go, or your heavenly Father cannot forgive you. Can somebody please hear that enough to actually believe it today? 
Do we realize what that's saying? That any prayer that I pray, if I'm praying it with unforgiveness in my heart, God cannot and is not going to answer that prayer. Sometimes we're praying for God to change somebody and we're in the middle of hating them while we're asking God to change them. <laughs> you know, you can't love what you want somebody to be. You gotta love them where they're at. Did you hear me? We can't love what we want somebody to be. We have to love them where we're, they're at and that will help them get to where they need to be. And I'm not suggesting that you let people abuse you or you let them take advantage of you. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But I am saying that you, don't, you can't carry this stuff around in your heart. Think about what Jesus said on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Stephen, when he was being stoned, said, forgive them. We read last night how Paul, when everybody deserted him, he said, Lord, forgive them. You know, I think a lot of times when people hurt us, they really don't know what they're doing. They're acting out of their own pain. A lot of times people hurt us and they don't even realize that they've hurt us. And, and I'm not saying at all that my father did not know that what he was doing to me when he was sexually abusing me was wrong. He had to know it was wrong or he wouldn't have gone to such extremes to hide it. But I really don't believe that he understood what it was doing to me. I don't think he, and, it, and really when he was in his 80s, he told me that. He said, I, I had no idea how bad I was hurting you. Well, he grew up in a household of incest, and so he was acting out of learned behavior, and hurting people hurt people. When you learn that, it's, it helps you to be able to get over the things that people do to you. There's so much stress in the world, and people today are just about to explode, and they end up hurting other people, and then we keep letting them hurt us by staying bitter and miserable. Life hurts people. So let me just ask, are you bitter because your life has had a little more than its normal share of bitter events? Just be honest this morning. How many of you have had a pretty tough, tough time in life? Let's see. I have too. I mean, I've had breast cancer. I've had migraine headaches. I was abused in my childhood, just, you know, on and on and on and on and on. But God has more than made up. Come on. God has more than made up. My goodness. Let me tell you something. Life is not fair, but God is just. Life is not fair, but God is just. And the devil will hurt you any way that he can hurt you because, let's be honest, he hates you. He hates anybody that loves God because he hates God. And the moment that you decide that you're going to follow Jesus, the enemy is going to be after you from that point on. You'll have breaks. Thank God we get breaks. <laughs> but... When he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness for those 40 days and 40 nights, the story is in Luke chapter 4, it says that after he had completed his cycle of temptations, come on now, you ever feel like you're just like one thing after another after another? You know, his, after he had completed his cycle of temptations, he went away to wait for a more opportune time. I think that's so interesting. We got to get smarter, and we got to watch and pray, and that means we learn enough about how the enemy operates that we catch him right away. So much of our battle is in our mind. Life is not so bad if we learn how to look at it the right way. How many people look all the time at what they don't have and never bother to look at what they do have? When I said, how many of you have had a pretty rough life? About half of the hands went up, and I'm sure you have had a very rough life. But I can tell you that you can help yourself right now today by doing just what I've had to learn how to do. I have to not look at what I don't have and what I haven't had and what I've lost and what I've missed and look at what I do have and what God has done for me.
I still wonder sometimes, once in a while, I found myself the other day wondering, wonder what it would be like to have a mom and a dad that actually really loved you. Wonder what it would be like to have a dad that you could go to for advice or a mom that really stood up for you. I wonder what, I wonder what it would be like to have a, a sister that I could hang out with. I wonder what it would be like to really get to be a kid. I, my, my childhood was stolen. I never got, never got to be a child. But you know what? God's given me back my childhood in my later years in life. God is a God of justice. And you know what that means? He always makes wrong things right. Life may not be fair, but now listen to what I'm going to say, because if you miss this sentence, you miss the whole thing. If you're willing to do things God's way, and that's the long and the short of it. If you're willing to do things God's way, then he will make up to you many times over for anything bad that has ever happened to you if you're willing to do things God's way. And that means that you're willing to obey God whether you want to or not, whether you think it's fair or not, whether it feels good or not, whether you like it or not. You get committed to doing things God's way because you actually really do believe that God is smarter than you are and that his ways work. Until by the time you leave here, hopefully and prayerfully by the grace and the mercy of God, not one person leaves here and takes your bitterness and anger and unforgiveness with you, but you're gonna leave it, walk away from it, let it go, and get about the business of living and enjoying your life. Amen? Yes! Yeah. Psalm 37, the first 10 verses, we're going to go through them. Don't worry because of evildoers, nor be envious toward wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Wow. Wow. I don't, I don't even know if you know how important verse 3 is in Psalm 37. I got a hold of this five or six years ago in the book that I wrote on unshakable trust. There's two chapters in it on trust God and do good. You know, when we're having problems, we always hear trust God, trust God. But that's not all the Bible says. Trust God, and while you're trusting God, make the devil as mad as you possibly can by being as good as you possibly can to as many people as you possibly can. Because that is the exact opposite of what a normal person would do. Normal people, when they're hurting, get cranky and grouchy and they don't want to be around anybody and they take it out on everybody else. But the Bible says the worse you're hurting, the more good you should do for other people. Who wants to do that? We overcome evil with good, Romans 12, 21. That is the biggest, most powerful spiritual secret in the Bible. If evil things have been done to you, you will never overcome them or get over them by returning to somebody else what you got. See, I spent years taking, I was making, trying to make my husband pay for what my dad did to me. You know, you do that. When you're mad at somebody and you can't get them back, you'll take it out on the people in your life. How many of you know that you do that? It wasn't his fault. I treated him like it was his fault because I wanted somebody to pay. I wanted somebody to pay. But then I found out in Matthew 18, whenever the man was being asked to forgive somebody for a small debt, He could not pay. The guy could not pay him back. Only God can pay you back for what's been done to you. 
People can't pay you back. Only God can pay you back. And he won't just give you what was taken. He'll give you double what was taken. <laughs> if you do things his way. Trust God and do good. Stop worrying so much about what everybody's done to you and do as much good as you possibly can every single day of your life. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. He will make your righteousness, your pursuit of right standing with God like the light and your judgment like the shining of the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him and entrust yourself to him. Don't fret, whine, or agonize because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and abandon wrath. Cease from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who do evil will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked one will be gone forever. Though you look carefully where he used to be, he will not be found. God will take care of your enemies if you wait on him. And Psalm 61, 7 says, instead of your farmer's shame, you'll have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, your people will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, now listen to this, in their land, I'm glad that doesn't say when you go to heaven. Therefore, while you're still here, in this lifetime, living your life, you will possess double what you forfeited, and everlasting joy will be yours. Somebody give God a praise. Any time that you handle your enemies the way God tells you to handle your enemies, now listen to me, there will be a reward in your life. How many of you have seen that? You've forgiven somebody that hurt you, and I mean, you can see how God has blessed your life because of that. Anybody seen somebody come to the Lord because you're willing to forgive them and say, my dad was saved not until he was 83, but the devil didn't get him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Mark 4, 17, that many are offended by trouble. These are people who have no deep roots. They hear the word and it sounds exciting until they have to apply it in their life. Isn't my message good today? On, on It's so good. You'll clap and cheer for it. I wonder how much you'll like it this afternoon if you have to apply it. It's the truth. We think it's all good when we're just hearing it. But it's putting it to work in our life. That's where the pain starts. It's when it happens to you. Oh, how easy it is to preach to everybody else. It'd be the same way with me. I can just enjoy myself preaching to you guys this weekend, last night, all day today. But let me tell you something. I get home tonight and something happens that I don't like. I, then I'm going to have to apply what I've been preaching to you all day. And if you think you get tested, you should live on this end of it. You know, our pain can have a purpose if we're obedient to do whatever God shows us to do. He can not only use it for our good, but also for the good of those around us. Let your pain become somebody else's gain. Zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen. En Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for third degree burglary. 
I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here, so they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld. En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor hun leven met Jezus gekozen. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Faith always opens a door for God to work. Every time that you pray for someone else and you really pray in faith, it opens a door for God to Try to do something in their life. Meer uitdagende gedachten vind je op het Joyce Meyer YouTube kanaal. Het bekijken waard.